Hey everybody, I want to welcome you into today's F260 Bible Reading Devotion. I'm glad to get to spend Friday with you and talk about a very important subject for just a minute from 2 Peter chapter 2. You know, God's Word commands us to love our brothers and our sisters and uh, to get along with one another and not be looking to pick fights or uh, nitpick at each other about a variety of things. At the same time, we know that there are some things that are essential. The gospel of Jesus Christ is an essential, something that's not open for debate, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. He was buried. He rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And we believe that the only way a person will ever make it to the Father and have that relationship repaired is through Jesus Christ, God's Son. Now, it's interesting that Uh, Just this week, if you listen to our staff podcast, we talked about the fact that 31% of people who call themselves Christians do not believe that Jesus Christ is God. And so you develop your own form or version of Christianity. Uh, You will ultimately uh, form a religion that might have the label of Christianity that is actually a Christless Christianity. Um, You either believe the Jesus of the Bible You either believe that the Bible is the Word of God or you don't. It's kind of either or. And so sometimes it gets really sticky in the subject that Peter is talking about here in chapter 2 about the importance of identifying, marking, and even calling out false teachers. Uh, We're in such a day today that is so combative. Uh, There is so much hostility and friction and division that maybe sometimes we're afraid because we don't want to come across as being harsh or uh, we don't want to offend someone or maybe under this banner of we want to give someone liberty that maybe we back up and we shy away from doing what we ought to do and that is speaking up when there is false teachings. And so Peter says in 2 Peter chapter 2 that there are false prophets and false teachers among the people. Now, keeping in mind, he's writing to Christians that are scattered in a variety of places, and he just reminds them that not everybody that comes into the church, not everybody that uh, has a winsome personality, not everyone that speaks very clearly and articulately in and around the body of Christ uh, is always teaching and preaching the truth. It's interesting that Peter says these teachers are among you. You know, it's one thing to say, They're out there, outside the church. Be aware of them. For example, I could say, you know, uh, be alert when you're uh, on YouTube or when you're uh, listening to a podcast or or watching a sermon or a service somewhere. You know, just be alert and make sure uh, that that person is teaching or preaching correctly from the scriptures. But Peter is saying those false teachers have a way of finding themselves into the church. There's a very strong admonition at the end of the book of Acts that is given to pastors to watch out, to watch out, be alert over the flock that God has made you the overseer because false teachers will come in to the church and try to subvert and lead people away. Unfortunately, what happens so many times, Peter says in verse number two, is that many people get sucked into that. They get pulled away from the truth. And again, it might be something that is appealing. It might be a message that makes you feel good. Uh, It might be um, maybe making you comfortable in a lifestyle that you're living in that, that God's word says, no, that's wrong. But someone might tell you, hey, it's okay. And so you get sucked away into the word Peter uses there is sensuality. And that's into, you you get drawn away into your flesh. Uh, Remember this, you can always find somebody who wants to tell you what you want to hear. I can always find somebody to tell me what I want to hear. To affirm my behavior, uh, I can shape the conversation in such a way to where it makes myself look better or what I'm doing be justified. But at the end of the day, Peter is saying, You better be careful letting people into your life who will draw you in that direction and affirm your lifestyle when they're actually just carrying you away from the Word of God. 
Verse three says that there are a lot of these false teachers that they have a goal and their goal is not discipleship. Their goal is not to help you grow in the Lord, to get better, or even to become a Christian, a true biblical Christian. Their goal, verse three says, they do what they do in greed and they use flashy false words in order to draw you in. And Peter says this about them. They're not going to be um, rewarded, lifted up, bragged on, on judgment day, but they actually have condemnation coming their way. Uh, they're actually headed for destruction. I'm reminded of what Jesus said about preachers, some who hold a position of being a pastor or teacher. In the last day, it says that they will stand before me and they will say things like this. Have we not prophesied in your name? Have we not done a lot of great works in your name? Have we not represented you? And Jesus will say to them in those last days, depart from me, I never knew you. Verse 17, as he's still talking about these false teachers, he says, these are waterless springs. They are mist driven by a storm. For them, the gloom of utter darkness has been reserved. For speaking loud boast of folly, they entice by sensual passions of the flesh those who are barely escaping from those who live in error. They will promise freedom, but they themselves are slaves of corruption. I, lo I love that phrase, right? Freedom, man, freedom. We certainly have freedom in Christ. But sometimes people use that word freedom to gloss over a disobedient and a rebellious lifestyle. You see, you can't do your own thing, okay? You, you can't, I can't just uh, go my own way, make my own rules, do my own thing. My life is set apart. Uh, we looked at this last Wednesday night in Titus 2, that we are bought with a price and we are the possession of Christ, so therefore we belong to him. And so I can't, I can't go my own way. I can't do my own thing. But sometimes those that promise freedom in religion, oh, we're, we're free. No, no, actually you're not. In some cases, you're bound to religion or you're bound to false teaching and you're going your own way. And Peter just says that these false teachers uh, are gonna have to pay for this and answer for this one day. And so let me wrap it up today by just saying, that as you listen to men and women teach the Bible, uh, as you're reading books and so forth, always be in the spirit of prayer, understanding, the spirit of discernment. Um, I made a little post today on uh, Facebook, and in that post it was Charles Spurgeon saying that discernment really comes down to that which is right and that which is almost right. You see, just a little bit of error, just a little bit of leaven will take you away from the truth of the gospel. And without apology, of course, we believe that God's word is the final authority and it is truth. So 2 Peter chapter two is an important chapter uh, to remind us that there are false teachers among us and we need to be alert and we need to be aware as we grow in Christ. Well, God bless you. I hope you have a great Friday and a great weekend and we'll look forward to seeing you on Sunday in the Lord's house. Have a good day.